Alrighty. So I'm going to be talking about seeding data in Rails. Um, I'm a really big fan of like using seeds. Not every application uses them that well. And I'm hoping from this talk, you'll be kind of nicely invigorated to like use seeds and apply them to projects you're doing. So um, also this code, I've written this talk, it's all written in Markdown. And if you want to like copy any of the code samples, you can find them at this Git repo. And if you want to like take the talk and make it your own, I highly encourage it. That's really cool. Um, maybe let me know as if it goes down well, if you want to like do it yourself or whatever. So yeah, please basically steal this talk. Um, cool. What we're going to cover. I'm, I'm going to kind of give you a brief overview of what seeds are. We're going to quickly like check the vibe of the room to make sure like how we feel about seeding. I'm going to tell you some really good horror stories, which are all completely true, which is really sad, but they're all true and they're all really fun. And I'm going to give you some really good approaches to seeding that you can apply to your projects and they're not too, too horrible. And I'm going to give you like a really cool trick for testing your seeds. So when you're like using them, you're going to always know they're going to work, which is great. Cool. So what are seeds? So normally they're little bits of fixed data we use in our Rails application. Sometimes they might be like a tax rate is the good example I've got where you might have that in a in the database or you might have it in like a JSON file or something like that. But they're bits of data is the best way to describe them. And in development, we normally have little bits of data to help us understand what the app does. Maybe it's like a couple of users or something like that, maybe some posts or something to make our apps beautiful. And I love Ruby on Rails because there's this command called Rails DB seed and it'll just go off and make our seeds and we can hopefully run it lots of times and nothing should go wrong. And I'm also massively falling in love with bin slash setup. I'm not sure if anyone's looked at that file, but if you just run that command when setting up any new Rails project, it should just set everything up. Uh, yeah, please, if, if, if that's the one thing you take away from this talk and you don't care about seeds, just have a look at that file and just run it. It's, it's so good. Um, so in Ruby on Rails, we store them in db slash seeds and hopefully that's not too shocking. In most projects um, out of the box, Rails will just kind of give you this. And I really hate this example. I think it's like the worst, the worst example of how to make seeds is the one they give you. Most people maybe don't change this or most projects maybe leave it. Um, I should probably clarify why I hate this example as well. It's because if you were to run it two or three times, I think it would like raise an error and that's really irritating. Um, also, I'm not a massive fan of Star Wars. I'm more of a Trekkie, so go figure. Um, but if you're really, really lucky, you will probably end up in a situation where maybe someone's added something to your seeds. So this is something I'm normally quite happy to like see in that file where it's someone's gone and they've just created a user for me to log in and it's only going to work in development. And I think that's that's nice. That makes me really happy. And Sometimes I get horror stories. So I've taken this from like a real project I worked on. <laughs> I didn't ask for permission, so FYI. Um, so this is very close to what it actually looks like. And this this made me like hate this project so much. It was like, there's so many things wrong with this, but mostly that comment at the top where it was like, by the way, this is out of date. Don't run this file. Uh, yeah, that scared the hell out of me. Um, and also the, the, the tax rate amount being stored as a string was also the, the more, more craziness. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the extreme. Um, so I just want to quickly check the vibe of the room of everyone here. Um, who's worked on a project where they've had like no seeds at all from the get go. Um, okay. So like a few of you. Yeah. Um, just like chuck up emojis, all that stuff. So yeah, probably all had that experience and yeah, it's, it's a horrible experience. Like, yeah, it's, it's not fun. No one wants to be in that position. Um, who has worked on a project where someone has sent them a dump of a database from somewhere to work on? Yeah, we've all had that experience as well. Oh, God, it's so common. It's like, it's like the most annoying thing where it's like, hey, go ask some dude in your company for a SQL file. And it's like, oh, okay. All right. Where did this come from? We don't, we don't know. It's just, just floating around. Okay, um, the last one, um, who's worked on a project where they felt the seeds were really well maintained? Okay, cool, cool. Awesome. Really? Okay, you've got some people who are lucky. 
in the audience as well. So that's always good. Um, all right, I'm going to show you some tricks to hopefully make it so more of you can say yes to this question. Uh, but first, I'm going to tell you some horror stories because I like to kind of really ramp it home as to why I think seeds are very important. Um, so this happened to a friend of mine. He was working in his office. He had downloaded the copy of the production database and was just messing around on his local development. And he closed down for the weekend and went home. He came back on Monday morning and someone had stolen the front door off of his office and, and, taken, and had taken all the laptops out. Um, this was really scary, uh, mostly because not only had they had like a lot of stuff stolen, they also had all this data sitting on their laptop, which wasn't encrypted, which uh, was really, really, uh, really frightening. Uh, I hope I haven't just frozen. Cool. Okay. Um, cool. There we go. Sorry, I still like it freeze a little bit and I was like, oh. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, they then had to, to tell their customers that they lost all the data which was really terrible. Um, there was all this data lost, all these users were gone, and that was that. Cool. Is this going to go to the next slide? Cool. Uh, the next one, next story I've got is uh, there was a preview environment which was totally failing. Um, this is a real story. We had an environment where it started emailing real users, and it was a set of failures which happened. We had a client who was like, I want unencrypted data in my staging environment. And then they ditch, <laughs> then they requested like it to send real emails and then they had it running real cron jobs and then yeah, it chucked out real data. So we had about 10,000 customers emailed with a staging link and the user could started playing around in our staging environment. So really scary. And if we had had seeds for that one, I feel like it would have been at least partially avoided. And finally, this is the most important one. So um, I really hate kind of bringing developers in and giving them a horrible experience with my code. I want them to have the best experience. So if someone new comes to my project, whether they're junior, senior, whatever, I want them to sit down, run bin setup, and then they look at the app and know exactly what it does. There's no like blank pages on the app. They can go through in development and play around and maybe we can sit together and just be like, hey, I want to show you everything this app does in this nice safe environment where we can destroy everything. It could all go wrong and it would be wonderful. So yeah, so again, if we have like seeds, we can make people want to hang around in the Rails world as well. Like if they're having good experience, they'll, they'll want to keep doing Rails. Cool. So hopefully I've scared you enough to want to write seeds. Uh, let me give you some approaches. So this is kind of the approaches I'm going to cover. And again, all this code, all the samples are going to be in that repo I showed earlier. So first off, depending on how complicated your application is, you could just have a folder within your DB seeds, in your DB folder, like maybe call it DB slash seeds. And it's just a list of stuff. And you could just do that approach where you do find or create by and you chuck some stuff together. Like that's fine. That's a really good starting point. And if you're doing that, that's good. And if you're really good, you might be able to use like Faker as well. Like I'm, do you know what Faker is? We've all heard of this library. All right, cool. Yeah, it's a wonderful gem for this like kind of creating uh, random bits of string and stuff and all random data. It's very, very cool. Uh, and it's also good for fuzz testing, if anyone's ever tried that, where you kind of write a test, you don't know what's there, and you're going to change it up. Cool. So you can take those seeds as well and kind of maybe the first time you run it, if a user doesn't exist, then you create the user and you chuck some data in there and it's completely fake. So that's really good. And I'd probably also encourage you to use a little environmental variable, like I've got an environment variable, like I've got in the bottom here, where it's just like, hey, you can, if this variable is here, go do this. The reason that environment variable is very cool is if you're ever using preview environments, like you, know, you make a pull request and you want to get something to look at, then you could use like these seeds for that same approach um, or that environment even. So. Um, the Heroku pipeline is like a great example of this, where you create the pull request and it spins up an environment. Um, so that's really cool. So hopefully that's nothing too too wild there. Um, the other thing I was kind of playing around with before this talk was I I used fixtures. Um, I don't really like fixtures that much. Um, I find they're like really like not a most up to date or well maintained aspect of Rails, or at least in most of the projects I worked on. But you can use fixtures to load. Uh, seed data, which is kind of fun. Um, I did also run into some problems with foreign keys when I was 
playing around with it, so I don't I recommend it, but it's a fun option. Lastly, when I was kind of doing some research on this, I realized most of my tests are pretty good. Um, like kind of humble brag right there that I, I like to write my factories first and have a lot of fun. And I got thinking about whether you could use FactoryBot to seed your development environment and preview environments. And this was really exciting. I got really excited about this because I found out you can, and it's really easy. And I started doing it, and I really fell in love with it. It was a really fun approach where I would just kind of give it a unique-ish key so I wasn't like you know hammering my environment with the random data all the time. But for development, I got to the point where I could just, whenever I was switching branches or like, you know, going to a preview environment, I could just spin up a, almost an entire app with loads of really good sample data. And the happy side effect of this was my test became easier to write because I kind of knew what stuff would be there. Like I could go into development and see what pages would look like with all this fake data. And then also I wanted my tests to be, uh, my environments to look better. So my factories became better as a result. They were more like built out. So I didn't have any like factories which were just kind of like partially built. It was like my whole app was available in the factory. Um, one little caveat, it's important to note that like FactoryBot doesn't actively encourage you, sorry, ThoughtBot doesn't actively encourage you to do this. Um, but I think that's them more just being careful about uh, people like, you know, going off and, you know, making a horrible mess with this. And they just want to be like, yo, we aren't endorsing this, but you can do it if you want to. Um, so obviously that's a really good approach um, using FactoryBot like that. However, sometimes you might need some data from production and maybe you've got like a very unique problem where you can't quite, you're not sure what the data looks like to cause the problem. You know, it was a certain user. For that, there's a really cool gem called Evil Seed. And what you can do is take like partial snapshots of your production database, anonymize key fields. So for example, emails and names, addresses, you can just kind of replace them with garbage and then you can just get a SQL dump. So I got really excited about this approach because imagine if you have an exception and you know the user who caused it, you could potentially queue up a task to take a snapshot of all that user's data at that point and include it with the exception like notification, which is really cool. Or if you just need to get a snapshot of production, you could have it so it builds something every day and you know the data in it is going to be anonymized. So really exciting stuff. So yeah, really cool gem. I got very excited about this. And the last kind of little trick I want to share is using plain old Ruby objects. Um, so in a lot of my bits of code, like if a piece of data is the same across all my environments, so production, test, development, I kind of always wonder, does it belong in the database? And I started playing around with this kind of approach where if I have something which looks like this bit of code, where maybe I've got like a set of plans in my database and there's only ever like four of them and they all kind of contain pretty unchanging data. So I started playing around with just saving them in my models as struts and making them pretend to be active models when really they weren't. But then all the data is there and it lives in memory. And I really fell in love with this really quickly. Um, this is kind of all I had to, to do. You could probably enforce the plans with enums if you really wanted to as well to make it even better. But yeah, this this I fell in love with where it's like, oh, I don't have to worry about like joining tables and all this other stuff. I can just I can just have like a bit of data just there in my code base. And it's beautiful. It's inversion controlled as well. So if it changes, it's great. Um, and lastly, I want to talk about testing. So I, I'm guessing most people don't like actively test their seeds because, like, you know, you, you're going to be running Rails DBC quite often. But if you use like the EMV technique I discussed earlier, you could just have this little quick test here where it's like, hey, does this thing run without error and actually create some stuff in the database? Great. And then if it ever breaks in CI, you'll probably know about it. And then you can go back and fix it. And then that initial developer experience will always be working. Like, I guess no one ever wants to come into a, uh, into a project and have broken seeds. So this is cool. And the other kind of benefit of using FactoryBot, which I've always really, really fallen in love with, 
is uh, you can lint the factories. And so if you're using factory bot to build your development environment and your tests and like everything else you need, if you're linting them, you know they're always going to work perfectly. And if there is a problem, it will raise that up pretty quickly and be very specific. This learner code, really, really, really good. Really recommend it. Um, cool. So what is kind of like the summary of this talk? So I think you should always be able to run Rails DVC like over and over multiple times. If you can't like run it and run it again and have like a correct environment, then you need to work on that. You should totally use EMVs to be like, hey, I'd like this environment to be seeded. Um, I use the example of like seed user. You could call it whatever you want, but controlling that with environmental variables is very cool. Um, using them for previews. Um, so again, I mentioned like Heroku preview environments, really cool. I love like Heroku for that. Um, this, if you're using them in that environment and development and tests and all this other stuff, you're just gonna like actually want to maintain your seeds. And yeah, like obviously plain old Ruby objects, fantastic. Battery bot, I love. And that evil seed gem has just made my life so happy. Like uh, I'm a very happy developer as a result of that. So I have one bit of homework uh, for everyone as well from this talk. And it's, I want you to take like one of your projects and just try and make the seeds a little bit better. And then like wait like a month and then just like let me know if it made you a happy developer kind of like hiding up the seeds and what the effect was. Generally, the feedback I've been getting so far is like spending, making those seeds slightly better and getting into the habit has made people enjoy their projects a little bit more. Cool. So I'm uh, Mike Rogers. On Twitter, I'm Mike Rogers Zero. Um, if you want to like, message me with any thoughts or feedback or anything like that, you totally can. If you want to see the code samples there in GitHub, as I mentioned, I'll check the link in the chat after this. And thank you so much. Um, it's really, really good to be here.